welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, we're working with Luminar 4. Today, it's all about working with layers. Like, when do you use them? What types of layers do you use? You know, you have stamp layers, you have adjustment layers, you have image layers. And I want to go over these so you'll have a better understanding of when and when not to use them. So without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, say you're at the opening stages of your editing process. So you might come here and go to the Essentials tab and go to the famous, now famous, AI Accent and, you know, bump that up and get a nice look to your image here. Maybe play with the Sky Enhancer a little bit. Something like that. And uh, you might want to play with the structure, uh, add a little bit of structure in there. I'm not going to go too crazy here, but just a little bit of structure in there. And uh, maybe come to the color and maybe remove some. Maybe you have a little bit of color cast in there you want to remove. This is a cool slider. You just kind of take it to the right and drag it. And it automatically removes color cast in your image. So let's just, let's just it seemed a little bit too blue. So let me just uh, get it looking to where it looks pretty nice and natural. So maybe somewhere right around in there. So there's our opening adjustment. Okay, so now I'll say we want to soften up this sky here. So we could come to the Creative tab and grab this Glow Filter right here. And let's take this amount to the right and get the image softer. Now right now we're in the Soft uh, Focus Bright Mode. And we could click through here and go to the Soft Focus Mode or the Soft Glow. See which one we like the best. And... I'm thinking maybe the uh, soft glow looks pretty nice. Let's bump that up a decent amount right here. See, somewhere right around in there. And then we could adjust the brightness, make it lighter or darker. But say, for instance, we only wanted that glow to go to the light portions of the image and only in the sky. So we could come and go to Edit Mask and click on Luminosity. I love these Luminosity masks, okay? So now... When we click the toggle here, we see we're only adding it to the highlights of the image. But it's adding it to all the image. But what if I don't want it on the water portion here, but only in the sky? Well, I'm going to have a hard time doing that because I've added a luminosity mask. So I won't be able to do that. But let me show you a workaround. So let's go ahead and reset this filter right here. Let's come up here to the layers. Let's come to add. Now here's a here's a place where you might say, well, when do I add a new adjustment layer? You would need to do it right here. So we're going to add a new adjustment layer. And now we're going to come back to the uh, creative tab here, back to glow. And let's do the same thing. We'll pull up the amount and let's go back to soft glow. That's the one I liked here anyway. So right around there. Now we're going to do the same thing. Go to edit mask, go to luminosity. And that's only adding it to the lights, but it's adding it to the all image. But here's the cool thing that we now have that we didn't have before. We can come back up to the layers here, and now we can go to Edit Mask, okay? And we can get ourselves a gradient mask, and then we can click and drag down, like so, and only add that into the sky. Now remember, it has a uh, lights luminosity mask on it. And we can adjust this graduation zone here by pulling it on here something like that so it just so it graduates off nicely maybe somewhere right around in there now let's click this uh this checkbox right here see now it's only adding it to the sky so here's the before and here's the after so we were able to add a luminosity mask and then because we put it on a new layer, we, we can add a layer mask to it and just apply it to the sky. So that's pretty cool. So that's one application where you definitely would need to use a new adjustment layer. When you're working with landscape images, a lot of times you want to close off the top of the picture by darkening it down a little bit just to keep your interest into the image. And you also want to close off the bottom portion of the image. To keep your interest in there and I might want to darken up just the uh, water area down just a little bit right here but before I show you how we do that let me click done from the last uh, adjustment we just made on the layer mask okay so what we need to do now is this is another time where we have to add a new adjustment layer because in Luminar 4 when you want to use when you want to stack up filters and I'm going to be using the uh, in the creative not the creative section but in the pro section I'm going to be using the adjustable gradient 
in order to use multiple adjustable gradients, what we need to do is um, we have to add new adjustment layers each time we want to add a new adjustable a new adjustable gradient. So let's do that. Let's uh, let's start with the sky. We're going to darken the sky. So let's come up to the layers and add a new adjustment layer. Okay, so we're going to come down to Pro, go to Adjustable Gradient, and it says Set Orientation right here. So let's click Set Orientation. I love this Adjustable Gradient. It's really nice. So let's pull it up right around in here. So I'm only worried about the top portion of the image here. So I'm going to take this graduation zone and pull it up a little bit, maybe right around there and try that. Now we're working on the top, so we're already set to the top. So let's just take that exposure down a little bit. And you notice it's only adding the, it's only taking the exposure down right in this area here. So maybe somewhere right around in there. And then I could, uh, if I don't like the way it's graduating off here, I can widen that zone out. Maybe somewhere right around in there. Now let's click this toggle. Here's the before and here's the after. And if I got too much there, I can just pull this back a little bit. But maybe something right like that looks pretty good. Now, I want to darken. Uh, let's start with the water here. I want to take this water and just bring it down a little bit in exposure, okay? So to do that, I'm not able to add a new uh, adjustable gradient on this particular layer right here. So I have to come up here to layers and click the plus and add a new adjustment layer. Very important. Then we can go to pro and now we're going, going to set the orientation on the adjustable gradient again and I'm going to like take this transition zone and shorten it up here a good bit and maybe somewhere right around here. Let's click on bottom and now let's take the exposure Let's just take that exposure down on the bottom a little bit, maybe somewhere right around in there. Let's look at it. Let's play with our shadows. Bring our shadows up, bring our shadows down. I might even bring those shadows up. Open those shadows up just a little bit right there. And again, I'm just playing with this exposure, just to darken it up a little bit. Let's click this toggle. Here's the before and here's the after. So I just darkened it up a little bit. I might even take it a little darker. Pull the exposure to the left a little bit more. And let's click the toggle. It's very important to click this so you can really see what that adjustment's doing. And I think that looks really good. Now next, I want to darken off the bottom of the image just to close it out, just to keep our attention in the image. It keeps your viewers' eyes trained right into the image, and that's very important. So you don't want them to be able to like come out of the image. You want them to keep them contained in the image, if that makes sense. So what we need to do is come up here and add... A new adjustment layer. Again, we're just going to come right back here to Pro and adjustable gradient, set our orientation. This time, kind of like we did at the top of the sky, we're going to take this down here. I'm going to pull this graduation zone in a little bit, make it a little bit more narrow, somewhere right around in here. I'm going to work on the bottom and I'm just going to take that exposure just to close this image off at the bottom, somewhere right around in there. Now let's click this toggle again, before and after. But you see what that does? It just contains us. It keeps us from going out of the image here, keeps us from going out here. And I darkened the water here a little bit. So let's click this eyeball right here so we can see here's the before and here's the after. But do you see how that really helps in the image? So, so far everything's looking really good. Suppose we got our image at a nice point and we're really happy with it and we say now is the time to start experimenting to see if we could come up with something a little more interesting so we might want to start playing with some looks to give us some help now remember this when you're working with looks they may contain one filter they may contain 10 filters or more or less it really depends on who designed the look and how many filters they use so this is a time where you really want to use a new adjustment layer so, and I'll show you why here in a second. So we're going to come up here and we're going to the layers and we're going to click plus and add a new adjustment layer. Let's open up our looks here. I have a look in mind. I'm in the color essentials here and I like this look right here called London. So let's click on that. Now, if we come over here, we can examine and see the tabs right here. See, we have uh, the essentials tab is highlighted. The creative tab is highlighted. The Pro tab is highlighted, and the Suitcase or Deprecated tab is highlighted. 
And if we click on each one of these uh, tabs, we can see that there's a light filter involved. None of these other filters are used. If we come to Creative, we can see a glow filter is being used. If we come to Pro, we can see a color enhancer filter is being used. And if we come to Deprecated, we can see that a couple filters from Luminar 3 are being used, and that's a structure filter and a cross-processing filter. We don't have those filters in Luminar 4. We do have structure, but we have AI structure, but this is the old structure filter. All right, so that's the all the different adjustments that are contained in this look right here. Now let's come back up here to layers. Now, the fact being that I made a new adjustment layer, I can take these adjustments right here and ease off on them here. So if I thought that's a little too strong, I could pull back on it here a little bit like that. See that? And you notice this amount slider here under the look right here is going with it. These two uh, sliders are in tandem here, but it's really the same slider right here. So we can ease off in the effect if we want to. So that's another reason why we want to have a new, um, a new uh, adjustment layer when we're adding a look. Okay. Now, say for instance, let's get rid of this looks right here to get it out of the way. Say for instance, we thought, let's experiment, experiment with some blend modes. What would blend modes do with this particular image? So right now we're on normal and we might hover through some of these and say, hmm, darken, multiply, kind of interesting, color burn. Because remember, we're looking for a new, exciting, creative look here. So we'll play with some blend modes, overlay, soft light. Let's go to overlay right here. We might say we really like that. Okay, so we'll click on overlay. So you might think, well, it's too much. So I'm just going to take this uh, adjustments amount of slider and pull it back. But what there's a problem here. Watch what happens. It's easing back in the filter effects. But you notice when I take it the whole way off, I still have that overlay blend mode there affecting the image. So watch when I click adjustment layer five, click this checkbox right here. That's without it and that's with it. So I can adjust the amount of the filters, but I cannot adjust the blend mode. But there's a workaround, and I'll show you what that is. And that gets us into another adjustment layer, or not an adjustment layer, but another layer. So let's come up to the plus here and create a layer. This time, let's create a stamp layer. What a stamp layer will do, it'll take all the adjustments that are on this image so far and stamp that into a brand new image. And you'll see what I mean here in a second. So let's click Create a New Stamp Layer. Okay, and a new stamp layer is made. Now, if I uncheck the new stamp layer right here, you won't see any difference. Now, if I come to the layer below that where I added the looks and uncheck that, you'll see that I'm going to get back to the image up till I added the look. All right, so let's leave that one off. Very important. We're going to leave this one off, but we're going to turn back on the stamp layer. So now, guess what? Remember when I was on the layer before it with the look on it and I put it in the overlay blend mode? I could adjust off the uh, filter adjustments so that I couldn't get rid of the overlay blend mode. I couldn't ease back on the overlay blend mode, but watch now, I can. Now that I made a new stamp layer, I can take this image opacity and start to ease off on it. And I'm easing off on all that you know, the overlay blend mode and all the new look adjustments that I put on it so I can take it back to the original image. But watch, I can just add a little bit in there. So just as much as I want, I can adjust. So I might say, you know, that looks beautiful. I'm happy with that. So now I can uh, click this checkbox here. Here's the before I added the uh, look with the uh, overlay blend mode. And here is after. And I eased off on the image opacity a little bit. So right there. So that's pretty interesting. And hopefully this is going to give you an idea of when you use adjustment layers, when you use stamp layers. The only one I didn't go over was the add new image layer. And when you, when you click on that, it's going to open up your file browser and you can add another image to that. Uh, I'm going to cancel that for now. But for instance, what might you want to use that for? Well, say you did a sky replacement and you wanted to blend the sky you replaced into the water. Well, you could bring that sky replacement image in as a new image layer and then blend that into the water. That's one application. Or if you wanted to add another element 
to your image from another image. But that's that's the add new image layer, and we don't need it here, and you're not gonna be using that too often, but this, what I'm showing you today, working with new adjustment layers and stamp layers, very important. It's an everyday occurrence in your uh, Luminar 4 workflow, and I really wanted to help you to understand it today. I went back and renamed all my layers, just in case you'd have to go back and make some readjustments, you'll know what each one of those layers are doing. Um, and to do that, all you need to do is come to these three dots on your layer and come to Rename Image and go ahead and type in a new name for that layer. And so that's really something I highly recommend that you do. Well, let's click on the eyeball here so we can see the original where we started from. So here's our original image and here's where we ended up. I think it's a pretty nice little edit here. And this edit is all about using layers, using adjustment layers, stamp layers, and image layers. And I hope after this tutorial here today, you'll have a clearer understanding and a better idea of how to use them. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comments section below. Um, if you enjoyed this video today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. And if you do, uh, click that subscribe button and also click the bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified about it. Well, it was all about working with uh, layers today. Adjustment layers, stamp layers, and I just covered briefly image layers. So hopefully you have a better understanding now how they work and it's gonna really help you along in your workflow. Thanks for joining me today and I'll see each and every one of you right here next time. But until then, happy editing.